The day finally came where I received an email asking how I test HT batteries with a continual load tester with a computer-based analyzer like I have from West Mountain Radio. And this was an email sent in to me from HOA Ham. So great question. I did respond to him with an email response that I found less than safe. The way that I test my batteries is less than safe is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, so today I want to explain that way of how I used to test my batteries with a continual load tester and why I'm switching my method here. And I'm going to show you that method so that you can learn. And what I would do is I would take a battery for an HT like this one right here and I would get electrical tape and I would take a piece of wire, for example, a red wire and a black wire, and I would put them on the negative and positives, making sure they weren't touching as I taped down the electrical tape. Now, you might have guessed it. If they short out, there's a risk of a fire there. And there's more problems, too. If the connections to those terminals aren't very tight, you're going to keep losing connection. And when you look in your computer-based analyzer, your results will be less than optimal. So that method doesn't work out unless you're very patient. And while thinking of a solution because I got a new TID radio in the mail, <laughs> uh, I came up with this and I want to show it to you. Let's go over to the desk right now. So again, quick recap, this is the computer-based analyzer I purchased for around 200 bucks. I'm not really sure, and it's been great for me. Before that, I had the Amazon uh, continual load tester, which I'll link below. That worked as well. However, uh, the problem is, is you plug in your power poles here, and after you plug in your power poles, those two terminals have to connect somehow. This is my solution today. We're going to test it out together. Let's grab a battery. And this is a battery for the TID Radio H3, but it's not the replacement battery that is charging right now. It's still charging. So with this, we know we have a negative, we have a positive. Instead of using electrical tape, I went to Harbor Freight and I purchased a 28 pack of these alligator clips that come in various sizes. And I think this is a great solution because guess what? Batteries also come in various sizes. And here's our goal. First, we're gonna get the positive and the negative or you know, the black and the red alligator clips out. All right, there we are. And we want to be able to put these on a way where they're not going to touch each other and short out and potentially create a fire, damage the battery and all that good stuff. You will see here, I've already been testing it, so there's a little bit of scratches on here, but if you're only gonna test this on a continual load tester or computer-based analyzer once, should be okay. For clarity purposes, black is gonna be going to our negative terminal and red is gonna be going to our positive terminal. But when we put these on, we have to be mindful of the back side of the battery because it would be very easy for these to touch. And I have found that the best way is sometimes to go at an angle from the top, but again, every battery is gonna be slightly different, right? Those are not touching, and those appear to be on each terminal, but we need to determine whether or not they are actually are on the terminals and if there's continuity between the end of the alligator clip and the battery terminal itself. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure there's voltage. And there's not voltage on the alligator clips, but I want to make sure that there's voltage on the terminals. There is. So that tells me that one of the alligator clips isn't hooked up. We go over to our multimeter and we go to the continuity side. I turn the sound on. There is no continuity between the alligator clip and the terminal for positive or for negative. So I need to adjust these slightly. And this is going to be a as radio per radio basis, but basically I want to make sure that they're connecting or touching somehow. Like with that positive right now, there's continuity, so that's good. And we just need to adjust this negative a little bit more. You'll notice continuity between the positive and negative, but you should notice no voltage, right? Because if there's voltage, I mean, excuse me, there should be no voltage between the positive terminal and the alligator clip. 
and there should be no voltage between the negative terminal and the alligator clip, and there's not. If there was voltage, that would be a huge problem, disconnected immediately. But we do have everything hooked up now. And I could easily have put these terminals or these alligator clips on the actual uh, ends of the power pole adapters, but I thought it would be wiser to be able to have two smaller alligator clips. This will allow this to be a universal cable for any battery, and then all I do is I go up to each battery after I get the alligator clips on, and I hook them up. Now, again, if I wanted to, and this is demonstration, so it's a lot slower, but all I have to do at this point is check for continuity again and check for voltage. There should be eight volts on here. And there it is, eight volts, eight volts. So now it's as easy as us uh, hooking up the computer-based analyzer and going into that software, or uh, rather, if you have a continual load tester, just using the continual load tester to determine your milliamp hours or how much power rating the battery actually should be. Did I say that right? How much power capacity? Don't even think about power. How much capacity the battery actually has. And so with that, I think that that's a much better solution than using electrical tape on your continual load tester leads or your computer-based analyzer leads. And earlier I showed off this cool little chart that showed what an intermittent connection looks like. Losing voltage, gaining voltage, losing voltage, gaining voltage. Now here's an example of what a non-intermittent connection or a steady connection would look like. A proper connection to the terminals. Safety first, of course. Do whatever you think is the safest, but I think that this is a better method than, and safer method than using electrical tape. So HOA Ham, thanks a lot for the uh, the question there. I hope this one helps you out a lot. And I thought while I discovered it, I should share it with everybody else. Take care and have a good one, everybody. Channel's called Ham Radio Dude. Please like, comment, subscribe. Have a good one.